it turns parents into very sophisticated private trainers. Welcome to Uptech Report. This is our Apply Tech series. Apply Tech is sponsored by TerraLeap. Learn how to leverage the power of video at TerraLeap.io. Today, I'm excited to be joined by my guest, Gustavo Rodriguez, who's based in the Miami area of Florida. He's the co-founder and CEO at Baby Sparks. Welcome, Gustavo. Good to have you on. Glad to be here. Thank you for the invitation, Alex. Now, Baby Sparks is a software platform and mobile application. You guys are focused on helping parents and caregivers support their children's early development. Uh, help me understand, Gustavo, what was the problem that you saw and, and set out to solve? Well, uh, Alex, it's, it's a great question because it started, uh, this is a case study um, in human design. Uh, this was a, pre- a problem that I first faced when I, was a, when I became a parent myself. I was working at the time in investment banking. I was living in London and my first son, Nico, it was born and very fast I realized how ill-equipped I was to, to support him. Uh, so I started trying to figure out how to do it properly, uh, how to get the right tools, the right information, and it proved to be very time-consuming, uh, which uh, then led to the idea of doing something that was much smarter and that gave parents a much greater level of support. Parents definitely need support. <laughs> And there, there, there's so many things of, of, of ways that technology can be used to, to help us in our lives, make it easier, make, th- make things do faster. So being able to apply, all right, how can we bring an app, bring, bring, bring technology into to help when you're trying to raise your kids? Um, help me understand, just give me some context. Like, is it just an app that you've got a bunch of, of activities that, that they can do? Just give me some real world examples here. Absolutely. The best way to put this is uh, imagine that when you, uh, that you're going to a gym and you have a private trainer and this private trainer, uh, every day you're going to explain to him or her your objectives. You want to lose some fat, you want to increase flexibility, increase muscle volume, whatever it is, right? They are going to design a, a routine or, or, or a, a program of exercises for you to achieve those goals. No? When you think about our young children, those goals are set by, by, by science, are the masters. They, are, they, are, they need to be able to walk at some point, crawl, uh, uh, develop a, a, a zillion different things uh, uh, because they are changing very fast during the first years of their life. No? What Baby Sparks does is that it gives, uh, it turns parents into very sophisticated private trainers. No? It learns the development profile of each child identifies the specific needs, and then deliver content for parents to support those specific needs. Not for the average child of the age of your child, for your very unique Nico, Max, Sophia uh, uh, baby. Mm -hmm. We're definitely in an age of of customized experiences, both from you browse on Netflix, you want to watch the show that you want, to shopping on Amazon, you want just the item that you're interested in, and even going to your bank, you expect a, a customized banking experience. Now, for helping your kids, um, yeah, you, you want to be able to make sure you're giving them exactly the right training. So that's kind of where you focus on being able to say, all right, based on where they are and who they are as uh, as an individual, you, here's an activity. Can you help me understand, though, like, uh, what's what's one of these kids' activities that you would do with with a, with a toddler? Absolutely. They're, they're very simple. You get eight to 10 of these activities a day from which we recommend parents pick five. The, each one of them is done uh, with, uh, by an expert in a video, 45 second video. They look at, at the activity, then they put their phone down. This is not to give your, the phone to your baby and they turn around and they replicate what they just saw with, with, with their baby, what they just saw done by the, by the expert. For example, if you're battling your child, right? One great activity that you can do is that you can introduce some of these little floating toys and give your child a kitchen strainer, a, a standard kitchen strainer, right? And teach him or her how to fish them and put them outside. We are not at nine months age. This is a, an exercise for that age range, more or less, this example. It's incredibly entertaining for your child. He's going to be super happy. You'll be engaged with him or her while you bat him or her, and you're going to be supporting, in this case, fine motor development. And how long are these activities, do you say, each of them are? So uh, the video, the illustrative video to teach you how to do them, lasts 30 to a minute, 45 seconds on average. Uh, usually, most of them 
it takes for you to do like three to five minutes. If you do, if you do them during three to five minutes, there's some that are longer, there's different types of activities, but most of them, if you do our program that we recommend the five activities that I was telling you uh, in a non, non-consecutive, it should take you less than 20 minutes, uh, non-consecutive minutes a day. Hey, parents don't have a whole lot of time. So it's nice, it's nice to be able to, a quick thing they can be able to pull up and, and, and execute very, very quickly. So if, if when you were, were kind of thinking of this concept early on, you just weren't finding anything else out there. So like, is there not, what are the options? Like what are, what are parents uh, that, doing prior to this? You, you, you absolutely hit it on the, on what it is. Like when I was looking for this, Alex, it was taking so long. I was going in Google. I was trying to find the real science, not the one that was like the person that didn't know, but was trying to, to fake it. Like I was trying to, to find the real, the real sources of information and then apply those to my unique child. I mean, to give you an example, a child can start working as, working as early as 10 months or as late as 16 months and be completely typically developing. So, so, so every child develops differently. So you, I did not only have to find the information, but apply that information to the needs of my child. So what we tried to put here was something to say a lot of that. The platform automatically, every time you do these activities, these activities are extremely wired behind Cortez. So every time you do them, we ask you simply, was it too difficult, too easy, or just right? And because we know what we, the content that we're presenting to you, and we know what the, the, the way a baby develops, no? we start matching those, plotting the dots, and learning in what areas your child might be ahead, and in what areas your child might be behind, or right, in, right where he or she should be. And based on that, it, it, it iterate and help you to do more of these activities in a better way. When I was looking up on your on your website and, and app, it said, it said that smart adaptive technology learning exactly to, to their in, in their needs. I mean, for those that have listened to the series, there's different forms of of artificial intelligence. You have higher forms of using machine learning and, and, and to, to great depths. I, I guess in, in one essence, this is a form of, of AI being able to plot the course. Um, can you just share a little bit more, like what it went into building that uh, algorithm, that 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 mentality to be able to figure out and plot the course? Yes, it, it has been evolving over the years and become uh, more and more sophisticated. And we see where we are going because we, we can see the power of now feeding the data into the whole process. But when we when it started, it started like. I sat down, I, re- I had a team of experts in different areas. I have uh, preschool teachers, uh, psychologists, uh, PTs, OTs, uh, speech pathologists, like different areas. And I talked to them and I basically tried to learn very well in a very granular way with my developing team, the way they were picking every single activity that they were recommending their patients during therapy. How was that done by then? No? Mm. And we did what this map, we, we create different, different verticals. You, you, you might be a little bit behind uh, in speech or in, or, in, or, in, or in cognition, but you might be ahead in gross motor. So we create different verticals and we organize all of these activities by prerequisites in each one of these uh, verticals, no? So when you start telling us that in one area you are behind, we start looking at all the processes that are involved in the activity that you were trying to do. And if you are behind, we move you up, like a step behind. But if you say this was too easy, I'm going to move you a step forward and make it more challenging for you in the processes related to the activity that you did. And so far, and so on. So at the end of the day, you're going to have babies that are behind and ahead in a bunch of these different processes. And using that information, the algorithm is going to pick the perfect activities for you to do next to support those needs of your child. No, right. As yeah. we get, we by now more than, 7 million uh, parents have used Baby Spark around the world. So as we get also the data from all these children that have gone through our process, we are starting to learn to, to, to apply higher levels of artificial intelligence in which how to use that journey that we already saw for the benefit of our new uh, students. <laughs> yeah, it's it's fascinating. Once you have the data, that then you can do even more learning off of that and be able to kind of reinforce and, and help that. that exactly. Training. It's not yet quite a, uh, an, an AI assistant that's going to like uh, tell you what you should be doing by, by a conversation like with an Amazon That's what we are but... going with the data. Ah, the, the okay, that, that's the next part level. Of it, the predictive part of it, being able to say, listen, if your child is for some reason not reaching this milestone at a certain age, wow, 
the probability that this other milestone becomes a red flag down the road in a year becomes 20% higher. And then you cannot start only supporting developing, but you can start anticipating, predict, predicting any kind of red flag that you that you can preempt and, and, and intervene even before it shows up, it's observable. What age range are you covering? So the original product, which is the one that we have been talking so far, covers zero to three, no? which is the age at which uh, you most parents have kids around home and are dedicated to this. After, after the third year, many of these kids start going to preschool settings. They start being enrolled in classes, in piano classes, swimming classes, soccer. So, so it, gets, it, gets more, it gets more broader in the type of experiences that you're looking for your child. But what we have for that age range, because we, uh, many of the parents that were using baby sparks start requested, requesting that we continue to support them, is that we created a marketplace a marketplace in which experts, world-class experts around the world can come and offer their expertise and their services to our community of millions of parents. Basically, they can monetize their expertise using a, a offering on-demand classes, like pre-recorded classes, like a Netflix or a Peloton of parenting, if you will. They can uh, offer also live group classes, and, if, uh, and they can also offer private coaching, one-to-one coaching to the, to the parents. That was launched uh, early this year in January of 2021, and, and it has been going amazing. Parents uh, have been uh, digging it completely. <laughs> Having <laughs> content is always helpful, but curated content to exactly what you're interested in is, is the next big thing. And I can imagine with your future of machine learning, you'd be able to even give curated content to the next degree of different things in your marketplace for people to look at. I mean, I, as a parent, I, I have two kids, actually a third one uh, on the way next, coming next Congrats. year. So I, I, I feel like I actually, I need to download this app so I can, uh, I've, I have two kids, but I still don't really know what I'm doing. You know, it doesn't come <laughs> with a, a manual, but it, it's, it's helpful to have something going along this way. I mean, I feel like you have something about parenting classes too. I mean, are you, are you, are you trying to teach parents how to be better parents? Or are you just like, wh- how, to what degree are you helping the parents versus just the babies? And like, what's the balance there? Every, every journey is different, right? And I'm not pushing anything to parents. I'm actually trying to help with the pains that they, that they come with, to us with, right? Mm-hmm. So if you are just looking by guidance, uh, for, for guidance, uh, you're just going to use the program that we have been talking in the first part of this, co- of this conversation, right? But if you want to learn about a specific topic, like, listen, my kid might not be sleeping the way I need him to sleep, to be able to go to the office, I'm, I, I'm no, or I'm trying to potty train my child, or, oh my goodness, I see some signs of the ADHD, uh, autism, whatever it is, right? Then perhaps you want to get more information about it. You can get our on-demand, our pre-recorded classes about that. If that's enough and you're, okay, it seems that everything's fine, you stop there. But if you still want more support, you can get in one of our live group classes with the expert that you just saw on the on-demand class and ask questions and say, listen, this is what is going on. And if this becomes a major concern, you can even hire that expert for one-to-one private coaching. This this idea of, of a parent being able to have this on-demand, be able to learn and grow, this also comes to the concept of, of doing a lot more at home. Like often we go to a, a class or a seminar somewhere. Uh, I, I feel like with our first kid, we actually went to the hospital, had something, and we went to the, this class prior to the kid coming and then a little bit, I think a little bit after. But we're definitely more into the online learning. Everyone's used to this, yay, COVID and beyond. Do you see the home learning for even for your children, teaching them and, and, and online learning really being a key piece of, of education going forward? It's, 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 it's key. As you were saying before, our lives are getting only busier and busier. We have less time. And if you think about any parenting concern that you have now, uh, your journey is going to be something like this. You are going to start talking to your partner and say, wow, we are seeing this. Perhaps we should go to the pediatrician. You are going to make an appointment. Two weeks later, you are seeing the pediatrician. That pediatrician is going to say, mm, there might be some merits here to see a specialist. So he sends you to a to a PT or to an OT or to whoever, whoever is the next step, which takes another month to get there. So month and a half after several copayments down, you are finally starting to get your answers and you are very busy. You are skipping work and you're doing because your child is the most important probably thing in your life, right? What we are trying to do is take away all the steps from the process 
your concern is in this area, log into Baby Sparks for a very for a fraction of the cost of any of these copayments. Find a very a world-renowned expert in that topic, learn from his on-demand classes, and if you want, even talk to that person a few hours down this afternoon or even tomorrow. Like mm -hmm. takes saves time, saves money, and gets better help faster to this to the children. So it's a win-win situation. Uh, just for fun for those that are listening to podcasts that have have toddlers and young young kids uh, educational games are just like fun to do with them if just what's come to your mind one that, that uh is probably part of your app or someone could do anything that comes to your mind that you could say all right this is something fun uh educational game you can do with your with your kid listen one of my favorite activities that we have did you see ever uh, this movie of Catherine Sita jones uh, the, in which uh, entrapment in which there was a bunch of lasers and she had to go uh, to cross the to cross the to cross so the 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 one of my favorite activities that is a hit is that you find like an aisle in your house and literally just a piece pieces of a string right if you can make them red even better and what you do is that you tape them diagonal horizontal more vertical uh, throughout the aisle and just with a piece of tape on each side and you put like 20 of those and on the earth, at the end of the aisle you put like a little staff animal and you say listen your mission is to get them without a, 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 like crossing without touching any of the strings, right? And it's so much fun. They feel like they are in a special mission. They are they have to go down, up, move in in so many ways, which is great for their motricity, for the gross motor development. But at the same time, they're having a blast, and you as well. That's one of my personal favorites. <laughs> I love that, but my, my kids are, are five and two, so I think I'm going to do that next. Because I think uh, the five year old, like, oh yeah, mission, let me do that. But my two year old will want to follow the five. It's going to be great. I'm going to do that next. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, there's tons. There's always with shades, the, kind, the amount of things that you can do. Just putting your 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 room dark and putting just a lamp behind you and 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 getting them to manage their hands to create different shapes or different or guess. Is it, it, there's we have tons of activities that I think parents will enjoy a lot. Mm -hmm. There's two things that I that I'm I love, and it's technology and business. And when the two come together, of, of being able to build a business around technology to help and solve a problem, I, I'm fascinated with. And you've done that with this. You, you've realized that there was a challenge and built this whole technology app around it. You've gone after. Let's talk about the business side a little bit. You've gone after consumers directly. Uh, you started. What, what year did you start? This was 2014. We launched the first pilot, real pilot, in, in December of 2016. 16, um, okay. Uh, we, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And and you went directly after consumers at that time of, of like, here, here's an app. And was it a website and an app or just an app? Yes. Yeah, we bootstrap as a matter of fact, until until early 2019. And we were cash positive and we bootstrap from the beginning. We were only always break it, break even. It was just when we saw that there was so much traction and so many people wanted uh, this service and that there was a real need for this service that we went until, uh, after venture capital money to, to be able to scale, really. But we were profitable from the, from the, from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You set out... Oh. Not anymore. Out now that we're growing, yeah. of course, we born. But that's the that reason you raise capital, to be able to afford burning capital. But, but yes, uh, we, for a long while, we were, were a cash positive. Mm -hmm. Did you begin this to, to, with the idea of one day being like the, the billion-dollar childcare development app that's going to cover everyone around the world? Or... What what was your what was your mind when you started? I I, I love the idea. Listen, I, it's, it's the classic question to answer. I, I love to solve a pain, right? I my background was in a complete different industry. I was in financial in investment banking, in the financial services industry, working in mergers and acquisitions. So so a complete different uh, side of business. Uh, and this uh, gave me so much purpose. Like I knew I have experienced that myself. And I wanted to solve this and I wanted to create a product, the idea of creating a product that it was not just my aunt and my cousins buying it because they are kind to me, but that really was adding value to the world. No? Like the idea of not just doing business for business, uh, like you said two things, you love business you love, and you love technology. I love those two. I also love impact. I want to make sure that that business that I'm, that I, that I'm, that I'm building is having a, a positive impact in someone around the world. And, and, and that was my goal. I didn't know if I was going to have a tremendous amount of impact in a small community of children or little impact in many, many millions of children around the world. That for me wasn't clear when I set out to, to build Baby Sparks. If you go back to yourself when 2016, when you first launched, that had that at first MVP, and you could say something to yourself then that you know now 
uh, what would you share? I, it's so interesting because I, I bootstrap for a long while and I think that some of the reason we have been successful in raising capital for many, for many funds is because they love uh, scrap entrepreneurs that, that get things done with very little resources, no? And they saw that in us, no? But I do believe that if I had been able to start the journey of putting serious capital and building capital uh, and building the proper team uh, with the proper resources around this, uh, well, we would have started to accelerate the journey of the business earlier and we would be far along. So, so uh, I, I would say don't always, don't, it's great to, to have revenue, to, to have uh, some of the elements to raise capital in place, but just like with any technology product, don't wait for everything to be perfect to go and look for this capital if you think that you require capital. If you don't require it, by the way, I'm so jealous and good for you, but if you think that you're going to need it, uh, don't wait until everything everything starts aligned to, to go and do it. It's going to help you. Was it, it's kind of a leading question, but was it easy to, to go and find uh, parents and get them to use your app? Actually, finding the parents, we, when I start doing this, it's not like now that, you know, like advertisement in Facebook is or the Instagram and all that online, like everybody knows how powerful it is. But back then it wasn't that as clear. So we tested a bunch of things. After being a banker for, I don't know how many years, I was going to this mommy and me uh, shows, like uh, uh, we, uh, and I was putting a little stand and I was talking to, to, to parents. So it took us a while to experiment with different channels. But when, when we got to it, uh, we were able to scale and find the parents very easy. They wanted us. If you had to think of one <coughs> tactic that's worked for, for if it, other founders and entrepreneurs out there that are trying to build apps and solutions and pr- solve problems for uh, parents and, and child care, what, what tactic work? Is, is it Facebook marketing? Is, is it, you know, SEO practices? What's worked for you? Um, you mean what? To find the, the thing that, that, that that's a loaded question, Alex, because yeah. the, the, there's the, the most important thing, because I, I don't care how much money you put into Facebook or Instagram, if you don't have market fit, it's not going to work, no? So, yeah. so, so the first thing that I, I, I'll tell you, and that's also another thing that I would tell to myself if I had the opportunity to talk to myself back in 2016 is, is don't, don't, don't rush to, to try to make it big and scale fast. Iterate with a few clients until you get market fit, until you know that the pain that you feel that you are solving, you, you, are, really, you are really truly sol- solving it. And then the scaling is going to be easy because it doesn't matter what you're going to do. You, every dollar that you put into marketing is going to go so much farther because so many people word of mouth and people are going to recommend and love your product. Uh, when you grow fast without having that market fit, actually you are uh, cornering yourself because you are going to be burning more capital. You're going to have met- unit economics that don't work, right? And then uh, uh, because you are reaching more people because you grow without that market fit, that means you are warning more capital and, 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 and problems are bigger. So first market fit, then a scale, like is, 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 is what I would say, no? So that if, what works is market fit. After yeah. that, Other- Facebook, Instagram, whatever, yeah. uh, those are all equally powerful tools, just market fit. Is if you scale before the product market fit, you're just scaling your problems that you're having to deal with. The when, when did you feel like you 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 found product market fit? Are you still fine tuning that? You're always fine tuning. Like mm-hmm. that, I think that you never finish. I think that Facebook, Uber, uh, any of the Amazon, all of them are still finding mark, uh, improving and improving the market fit every day. Uh, so it's a never ending uh, task. But I I believe that when I realized that. The people that, no matter how much money I was putting into marketing, the people that were uh, uh, downloading the app was overwhelmingly uh, um, organic, uh, and and the, and our conversions were off the roof versus most of the products that I could compare it out there. That when I realized that we have found uh, something and that we were uh, delivering something that was a. Uh, um, uh, meaningful to them. The second part of that, of course, is not just getting them, but how long they 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 have stayed with you. Uh, we have been since 
uh, our retention rates have continuously improved since like the second quarter of 2019. So I can tell you that every single quarter we do better at keeping people longer with us, which means we are delivering more value to them. You said earlier that you're, you're focused on the, the one to three market, um, a, a child from well, ages one to three, and then they move on to other things. Does that mean you're always having to acquire effectively <laughs> new parents because their kids grow up and then you got to get new ones? Or, or what's, what does that life, life cycle look like? Yeah, you, you, you again, right. That, that, that was the issue that we, one of the issues that we saw with our marketplace of parenting classes, because the easy answer to the question is yes, if you are, you are, you can be great at acquiring parents and you can be great at converting them. But zero to three, that means that on average, you get them when they're 18 months old. That means that you have a year and a half to, to, to window with them. And that's not great after all that work to get them. Right. So, 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 so the, the easy answer could have been just expand the program. And it's the easy, but it's not the right one because the behavioral patterns of families change after the third year. What you and I were talking before, parents start sending kids to preschools, can parents enroll them in different classes. So the same, the same app with the same activities is not going to cut it as it did when the kid was six months old, for example, right? So what you do next to support those parents is you get them the information that they now need for the new problems that they are facing. And that's the parenting classes. Uh, that's the age, uh, three, four, five, six years, are the age in which they might discover that there's ADHD, that there's a, there's some nutritional problems. So an expert in nutrition, in child nutrition, uh, that, that there might be some um, autism in the, in the mix, for example. So you get them an expert in autism, how to navigate those uncertain waters. So that's where the classes come into place to continue to grow and serve them uh, throughout that journey of parenting. You've built the relationship with the parent, assuming that they've they've gone through the classes, they've, they've the, the 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 activities and things with their child. That now, when they need information, ideally, they go back to the what they have trusted with. If they know that you have that available, so you're probably exactly. giving sm- slight clues all the time of, hey, when you need it, we do have other things. And now, and now you're able to keep helping them. Yeah, and and we know your child. You you you. We try to be smart. We don't try to be a blog. We we try to know what is going on in the life of your child, so we can serve that information to you, right? If your child is starting to crawl, I'm not just then sending you activities about crawling. I'm realizing that your child is mobile for the first time in his or her life, which means that I should give you, for example, an article about how to baby proof your house. So that your baby is not in in risk and your house is not in risk, right? So so uh, so that's that that knowing that journey really well, not only uh, uh, from a big picture perspective, allow us to continue to insert to get you relevant information that you are gonna value in that journey. You know? uh, Baby Sparks is a, a freemium model, is that right? A freemium model, exactly. Gotcha, and and it's you're always just measuring the the. The changeover for those who, who upgrade and be able to use more um, the the whole uh, parenting uh, the marketplace that people can get that is that a subscription then part of that that premium model or is that an, but, but you purchase as you use different different ones so right now we we, we started with just like uh, buying one class at a time right but I I I think subscription model is a much more powerful uh, when you look at side look at Peloton look at Spotify. Look at Netflix, look at everyone that is selling something comparable to what we are doing in other areas, Peloton for fitness, but it's, but it, 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 it's, it's subscription. It, you want them to have a Disney experience in which they pay one time at the entrance and they don't worry about money after, right? Even if they, uh, that versus having to pay for every class. And I love that. It's not the only way. You see out school that they have been extremely successful in charging for each class one at a time, right? So, it, so everybody has different ways to do it. For us, subscription is what suits our expertise and, and the way we went. So we have two levels of subscription. We have a basic subscription that only covers the activities, no access to the expert with that one. And then a premium subscription that covers the activities that the access to the unlimited access to the, to the experts live and on demand. But if you come to us and you are like, listen, I don't want to subscribe or anything. I don't want the commitment. I just want a, one class about anything right you can just pay for that class so that's a little bit hybrid uh, at the moment mm-hmm. if we just look at the future 
And we'll kind of end on on this. I, lo- I love ending on the future. And, and you were to predict uh, how technology will play a role in, in child development and in parenting and being able to, to raise your child well. What do you th- what what are we going to see in, in, in five years and 10 years from now? I think. Uh, as we as our technology gets better and better, less is going to be more and early is going to be the 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 biggest value added that we can give parents. Let me explain that. Less is going to be more because you keep getting busier and busier. We already talked about that, right? Which means that if you have a magic technology crystal ball that only tells you, hey, Nico needs support in this very specific area so that you know the most important thing that you need to do for your child every day, I will pay for that in a while. If someone tells me this crystal ball will tell you the one most important thing, read him a book, spend with him half an hour building Legos. If the other one is just go out and run, get him some physical activity, whatever it is, if I had a crystal ball, instead of having to immerse myself in information and information and information to figure it out, less is going to be more. And technology enables us to do that as, they, as we learn about every child. And the second one uh, is um, uh, earlier is better. Uh, uh, every single expert in parenting or uh, where it's a physician or an educator, uh, we, we will tell you that when you discover that a child has an issue, if you, don't, uh, if you find out about that issue in the first year, it will take one month of therapy to fix it. If you find it in the third year, it's going to take a couple of years of therapy to fix it. If you find it by the f- fifth or sixth year, it might be therapy for life. Like, like there's the, the, like time is of, is of the f- essence here. So if we can learn to predict those issues that are going to happen and not only uh, address them as soon as they are observable, but before they are observable, then we're going to do a great, a great deal of good to our future generations. So for me, those two things, when I see the role of technology in parenting is technology that enables to do part that enable parents, empower parents to do what I just said. And I, I feel like as you get more and more data and you start to apply more sophisticated artificial intelligence as such as machine learning, you'll be able to make better predictions sooner so the parents can be able to, to, to get right on it. There you go. There you go. What to do? Less is more and do it, start doing it earlier. Because that is of the <laughs> Love it, love it. Uh, for those that want to learn more, you can go over to babysparks.com. Obviously, you can also find it in, in, the, app sto- in the app store. Thank you so much, Gustavo. It was great to have you on, and thanks for sharing your knowledge. This was great. Thank you for the invitation again, and happy to be here anytime. It was a great conversation. I enjoyed it a lot. We'll see you all on the next episode of Uptech Report. Have you seen a company using AI, machine learning, or other technology to transform the way we live, work, and do business? Go to uptechreport.com and let us know.